So let me show you one of the common hang-ups with copy constructors. This also works for assignment operators when we get into the when we look at uh, assignment operators, overloading the assignment operator. Either way, kind of the same problem. I have a cow, num steaks, num legs, same thing from the previous video. In fact, just to make this easier, let's just go with num steaks. I'm going to make a struct, I don't know, calf. Right? And uh, I'll just give this calf, I don't know, int, uh, whatever. Okay, I'm just going to give it an integer member to give this struct a little bit more size than just one byte. Um, all right, and then a cow, let's say a cow has a pointer to a calf, so calf pointer calf, and then let's just make a simple basic constructor here, and I know I'm using animals, cows, and calves, and it's a little bit contrived, but really the idea is the same regardless of what your objects really are. This, these are the issues with copy construction and uh, assignment operations. So I'm going to, let's actually put our constructor down below our fields, and now I can say calf gets new... Uh, calf, all right, and then down here, you know, the this cow, this an instance of this cow is going to own its own calf. So let me do tilde cow like that, and and just to be proper, I'm going to say delete calf, all right. And in game programming, we generally don't new things up inside of things. We use the initialized methods and things like that. But we're just going to ignore that for now. I just need a cow, an instance of a cow, to have its own instance of a calf, all right. Uh, and as long as I write code that will call this uh, destructor, I know that this calf will get deleted, which is good. We're, we're trying to be nice and clean here. So let's make two cows again. I'm going to say cow Betsy. And uh, actually, let's just hit F10, which will build and start the debugger. F10, I'm going to F11 right here, and you can see the calf is made. Let me step out of that, shift F11. Uh, and then we hit the destructor, which calls delete. Step out of that. And so our calf was created on the heap, and then we deleted it nice and clean. Very good. All right, well, what happens if I turn around and write code like I did um, in the previous video? In fact, just to try to make these things squeeze a little better on the page so you can see it all at once. I'll do that. And then um, say I make uh, cow George, and I rely on the compiler-generated copy constructor. In fact, did you notice IntelliSense there, I believe? Yep. IntelliSense is showing us, hey, this constructor really exists. You didn't, you didn't, uh, you didn't create the copy constructor, but uh, I'm adding it here for you. All right. So if I say cow George like that, well, what happens when George goes out of scope? In fact, let's just introduce a new level scope here. You know, we could do this in a for loop or a while loop, but I'm just going to introduce another level of scope. And then down here, I'm going to say C out, leaving main or whatever, just to put some code there. All right. Well, let's F10 on this, and F10, F10, we've created Betsy, and I'm going to use my pencil tool here to draw what's going on. Here's our stack, all right, our stack runs up, there's a bunch of stuff in the stack frame, but eventually we get to uh, Betsy, so Betsy's created on the stack, and it looks like Betsy only has one int and a pointer there, so, so the ints first, so numstakes, let's just say numstakes is there. Uh, I guess if we're going from bottom up, then numstakes. Well, whatever. We'll just it doesn't really matter for what we're doing here. We got, uh, and then we have calf, right? This calf pointer, right? And the constructor ran for Betsy, which means I said calf gets new calf. So out on heap land out here, we created this calf, right? And calf has just one int to it, int, and it's af, it's afoids or whatever. I'll just say af for short. So, so Betsy's pointing to this one calf. And then I'm going to create George, which is a copy of Betsy. So here comes George. And the compiler generated copy constructor that I showed in the previous video. You know, that's kind of good up to one point. It's going to copy the value of num stakes. And I didn't initialize the value. So whatever Betsy's num stakes is, is it's, it's going to copy that up here. But it's also going to copy the value of Betsy's calf pointer. All right, this pointer, this pointer pointing out to this this calf we created out on the heap. We're not when we create George, we're not running the parameterless constructor, so George is not getting his own unique calf. George is a copy of Betsy, so so the copy of George here, his calf pointer is going to point to the exact same calf out there on the heap. So all the two are kind of sharing. Right, and this is this is kind of where we're getting into land arguments. If you ever get into a land argument with your neighbor or next door, you know, where should we put the fence? I really own this property. No, you don't own this property. Da da da. And all of a sudden, uh, fighting over a few inches of land could really turn neighbors into sour 
neighbors, which isn't good. But but now these these two cows, Betsy and George, are kind of fighting over who owns the calf. That's not really a problem until I come back here and I hit uh, F F11, F11, and then what happens? Well, this is George right now. Notice the debug point here. We're we're seeing George, and George says, "Well, delete calf." All right, and and hopefully you remember what the delete operator does. It says, "Go out on the heap." and delete the calf which is fine because George is going away right George we're, we're cleaning up right that's kinda what we wanted to do except that's actually kinda bad <laughs> George just deleted deleted Betsy's calf now that's rude that's like kidnapping in a way but but that's essentially what happens here okay and then um let me let me go back I'm going to hit F11, step, oh, we don't want to step through operator, delete, that's F11. Now we're leaving main, well, when we leave main, we're hitting this closing scope here, which Betsy's in this closing scope, so now Betsy needs to run her destructor. So hit, let me hit F11, we jump up, and what's Betsy going to do? Well, same thing that George just did, except Betsy doesn't know it. Betsy's going to delete calf. Well, Betsy is pointing to some ram out on the heap that she no longer owns that calf is gone as far as this the, this is where we get memory corruption is Betsy still thinks that she has a valid calf right and she is pointing out this memory and heap but you know maybe some other object was created there you know it's still heap land maybe somebody nude up a, a rhinoceros here and halfway through is where halfway through the ram for the rhinoceros is, is what Betsy think is a cat is a calf so so this is why in C++ we say you can shoot yourself in the foot because if you're not paying attention to your pointers, it's all RAM, it's all bytes. Be careful. Anyway, watch what happens. I'm going to hit F10, I think, because we're in debug mode. F10, yep, debug assertion failed. Blah, 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 blah. Basically, you're trying to delete something you're not supposed to delete. All right, and it's nice that since we are in debug mode, you get this nice little error, and that makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Now, okay, well, I can go debug that and figure out what I screwed up. But if I change this to release mode, all right, and we strip out all those debug checks, let me run this. F10, 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 F11. Windows is triggered a breakpoint. Ooh, this may be due. Let me clean the screen off here. This may be due to a corruption of the heap, which indicates a bug. Oh, interesting. I still, I still caught it. Gave us a nice error. That's nice. Heap, heap has been corrupted. Ah! Okay. Anyway. So a little bit different in release. I wonder if I just run this thing though. Control F5. Let me uh, let me break that. Control F5. Just run it. And uh, oh well, it crashed. So crashing is better than silently failing. And it really depends on the platform and the compiler you're using to determine whether you'll get something as nice as this or not. But fortunately, with this, with the Microsoft compiler and the setup I have here, where it's still like, hey, <laughs> there's a problem. I'm curious with the Microsoft compiler, if I go here to the project settings, down to optimization, maximize speeds, I wonder if I turn on full optimizations if we'll get any different behavior. Nope, still crashed. Okay, anyway.